Hello, here's Natalia, and welcome to the first science presentation on the Palio Pines Discord server. Today I will be talking about science of animal sounds, and how we use that knowledge to understand what dinosaurs and other extinct animals sounded like, which will nicely lead to the first preview into sound effects you might hear while playing the game. So stay put. But who am I? Hi, my name is Natalia, and I recently joined the Italic Pig as science consultant. Otherwise, I work as a paleontologist in Edinburgh, Scotland. I study evolution and behavior of pterosaurs, and I'm describing brand new pterosaur species from Jurassic. I have a master's in geology from the University of Manchester after working on early bird evolution, fossil preservation, and juvenile Tenentosaurus dinosaur, we have nicknamed April. I'm no expert in animal vocalization, but the past few days I've been researching the topic. So without further ado, let's get to it! Most animals, reptiles and us, produce sound using soft tissue apparatus called larynx, which is suspended from tongue, bone or the hyoid, which you can see on the picture here. Hides are usually the only element to fossilize, because they are cow children, but they can ossify. And say nothing about the vocalization of the animal, you can see hyoid preserved in this reptile school here. Vocal folds are found in very few animals, mammals, and some amphibians and reptiles, I'm going to go over in the next slide. But not all vocalization occurs in the larynx. Various modulations allow reptiles and amphibians to be vocal. Think about alligator rumbling or the frog croaking. These examples are rather specialized behaviors, usually exclusive to those animal groups. Here is a cladogram showing the distribution of vocal cords of the larynx and syrinx in drawed vertebrates. So you can see them are occurring in anura of frogs. Lunged uh, salamanders, but only lunged and only certain groups of them. Mammals, so us, chimps, and other creatures like that. Some geckos and lizards. Individual elements of snakes, like bull snakes, crocodiles, and birds. Humans have the most developed vocal abilities of all animals. We can modulate sounds to create words and communicate very fluently using them. Human voice is composed of three parts. Lungs, vocal folds with larynx, or, or voice box, on top of the chartria, and the articulators, so tongue, lips, and such, elements I'm using currently. Lungs cause a fall and vibrations in the vocal folds. The musical larynx changes shape to adjust to the pitch, while your mouth apparatus controls it. The syrinx is a vocal organ of birds. It does not have vocal folds like mammals, but it causes vibrations of the membrane and tympaniformis, sometimes more than one. The syrinx lies at the forking of the vocal canals. This allows muscles to work on both sides, enabling some birds to create two sounds at once. That apparatus varies a lot in birds. That's why you have different types of bird sound. There are also tertiary rings and first few branchal rings, which also contribute to the range of sounds produced. Those elements can actually fossilize and be found in extinct animals. Not all birds have syrinxes, we'll just like them, and can only do glottal hisses. Crocodiles are extremely vocal reptiles. That vocalization varies from different growth stages and genders. They bellow and vibrate and can produce over 20 different sounds with different meanings. <coughs> the alligator larynx is able to abduct and abduct the vocal folds, but is simpler than mammals or birds. The vocalization in numerous animals usually is restricted to nocturnal animals, animals that live at night, or animals that live in groups or take care of the young. Animals don't need vocal boxes to make sounds. Some animals vocalize using stridulation, which is uh, rubbing parts of body together, usually that are striated or textured, to create sound, much like a viol violin. You might know this technique from animals like cicads and grasshoppers. In fact, the loudest animal is a snapping shrimp, which uses a technique like that. But also, that also translates to vertebrates, like birds. Some birds can vocalize using specialized feathers, like clumped or mannequin, uh, which uses ornamental secondary feathers to create high-pitched sounds used in mating. The most famous example is a rattlesnake, who uses his keratinous hollow rattle to create the warning sounds. We can't disregard the idea of some extinct animals, like dancers, using wings, tails, pouches, and such to create sounds. Not all birds are vocal singers. 
Some are almost mute. After all, we have an animal called Mute Swan, who isn't actually mute. They can hiss and chirp and snort and whistle. Those things are called percussive sounds and are usually created by clacking the beak together. Storks are mute but can communicate using clapping beaks. Imagine dinosaur like triceratops using similar technique. Snipes also use their feathers to create a hoo hoo winnowing like sound. Some animals use clapping of feathers and beaks to create unison calls which are used in mating. But how can I use that information to understand how dinosaurs sounded like? After all, the vocal apparatuses have evolved independently, leaving no common sensor that can be applied to dinosaurs. There's also no evidence of cervical air sacs, which would point to bird-like vocalization, and soft tissues that might help vocalizing unlikely to be preserved. Animal behavior can't be completely extrapolated from bone morphology alone, but never say never. Soft tissue preservation, including internal organs, is possible. Just look at the Scipionix, with its fully preserved gut, or this ancient bird from China, with preserved lungs. Still, lack of information didn't stop pathologists from looking deeper into animal sounds. We're going to look at three case studies of dinosaur vocalization. O'Brien in 2016 compared two schools of a wild beast and a hydrosa dinosaur to see similarities in the vocalization. The study said, the natal dome may play a role in the long distance vocalization. The large maxillary and palatal sinuses, or the host associated with the nose, may have amplified vocal output by acting as resonating chambers. Acoustic models for harmonic wave production suggest that the wildebeest nasal dome could be capable of propagating low pitch sounds. Below the range detectable by predators. The wildebeest resonant frequency is similar to that of Lambertian dinosaur, like a hadrosaur. The study also suggests juveniles vocalize at a higher frequency than adults. Other study by Clark in 2016 looks at evidence of first fossilized vocal boxes of birds found in an early geese from Mesozoic. It is first evidence of bird-like vocalization in the time of dinosaurs. The author of the paper writes, from complex songs to simple honks, birds produce sounds using a unique vocal organ called the syrinx. The vocal folds attach to modified mineral mineralized rings which vibrate to produce sound. We have all this found in a fossil record of an early bird called Vegabis. The author states that the absence of terrestrial remains in elements like dinosaurs may be indicative of shift towards avian vocalization in bird song relatively late in the evolution, so late Cretaceans or worse. This suggests bird song was an early innovation uh, in contemporary birds, and probably was not present or common in the time of dinosaurs, which suggests dinosaurs couldn't whistle and sing as birds do today. So what about Tansus Rex himself? What does science say about his vocalization? CT scans of the skulls show fully preserved brain cavity along with ears. We can look at its morphology to know what kind of sounds it was capable of picking up and therefore what kind of sounds it could produce. Delegate cochlea coupled with extensive tympanic tonicity supports interference of low frequency sounds, says Whitmer in his 2009 study. Tansus Rex also had asymmetric ear, in which one ear was lower than the other, much like owls. This enables T-Rex to be a very keen listener, with the ability to pick up a low frequency sound. It is possible you could use such sounds to communicate with members of the same species. Concluding, patterns of animal vocalization vary from one animal group to another. There's no direct clue regarding their uh, sounds, but bird-like vocalization appeared only in late Cretaceous. Scrum morphology of Tyrannosaurus and Hadrosaurus allows for creation of low frequency sounds, but other percussive ways of dinosaur vocalization are probable. Most vocal apparatuses are soft tissue, so much remains unknown regarding natural sounds and remains open to imagination and interpretation, which leads us very nicely into the sound de design of the game. One has to bear in mind sound design is not just recording of animal sounds. Usually when you watch movies or play games, sounds animals or surroundings create is very different from the one it is in real life. For example, in many films, animal sounds are created by mixing and deforming sounds from different, very vocal animals and usually mundane things, like tires or percussion. Let's see if we can guess animals that were used to vocal uh, creatures in Jurassic Park. Trademark
trademark voices for the Velas Raptor come from animals like mating turtles and geese, out of all things. The fearsome roars of Tyrannosaurus Rex from the Jurassic Park film actually come from animals like small dogs and baby elephants. Just slow down and put it to lower frequency. Sounds of the enormous Brachiosaurus come from Donkey, and sound effect of sneezing was created by a fire hydrant. The thrill Dilophosaurus was vocalized by Mutsuon and the Rattlesnake, two animals we actually mentioned in this presentation. So now the most anticipated thing, the sound design from the actual game. Bear in mind, those files are only work in progress, and only represent small sample of sounds you'll hear in the game. Here are some early works of low frequency sounds you'll hear dancers making in Palio Pines game. Enjoy! I hope they lived up to your expectations. Bear in mind, they are only work in progress and more work will be done to create authentic and accurate sounds. As you see, it's very open to interpretation and there's a lot of inspiration real existing animals can provide us for any vocalization. I hope you learned something and enjoyed this presentation and thank you very much. Feel free to drop any questions after. Cheers!